Most Like Media. In this screencast, we're going to look at using embedded flash players in your website and your blog posts. Now, we've probably all seen blogs and web pages that have YouTube flash movies embedded in them, and we've probably also seen screencasts from Camtasia. What we're interested in today is actually embedding a flash movie directly into a web page without using either of those tools. Let's begin by doing a quick review of both YouTube and Camtasia. This is a blog which fairly typically has pictures and text added to it, and then as you scroll down you come to a YouTube video. YouTube is the most convenient and simplest way to host your videos on the web. Not only does it not take up any space on your web server, but it also doesn't take up any of your bandwidth. If you have a popular blog and your video gets lots of hits, you can exceed your monthly bandwidth allotment fairly quickly, and hosting video can become expensive. That's one of the reasons YouTube has become so popular. When you see a YouTube player, you just have to click on it to begin playing. Most web surfers already have the Flash Player installed on their computer, and so this is a very simple process for end users. However, there are a few downsides to using the YouTube Player. Because videos take up so much bandwidth, YouTube restricts the amount of information that's transmitted by any video by compressing it very tightly into a flash format. This means that your video loses some of its definition, sharpness, and clarity as it's compressed by YouTube. Also, YouTube restricts the size of and length of your videos. YouTube's videos are typically 320 by 240 in size, and they can be no more than 10 minutes long. Now, 10 minutes is actually a very long movie, so that's not a problem, but the size of the player may be. And finally, when you get to the end of your YouTube player, you may find things like this happening. This may be fine on YouTube, but from your website, you don't really want to send viewers scurrying around looking at other interesting videos and perhaps leaving your message behind. So you may want to be able to keep people on your site by not using YouTube. The alternative is something like this. This is a series of videos that's hosted on a web page. Each of these is made with Camtasia. They look like the YouTube player, or at least in that style, with the Go button and the screenshot. You'll see, of course, this screenshot is much crisper than anything in YouTube, and that's because it really is just a picture. When you click on the Go button, the movie loads in a separate page. Now, the advantage to this is that the screencast can be formatted to any size you desire. It's not limited to 320 by 240. This one, for instance, is at 800 by 600, which gives you a much sharper, much easier to view screencast with a much higher quality. You can also have clickable links. You can use various ways to sell your products by having the video encourage people to come visit a particular website by clicking somewhere in the video or other marketing tools. The disadvantage, of course, is first again, you have the large bandwidth for a large size video. And secondly, once again, you've moved away from your web page. People may be very engaged in your video, but when it's finished, they may not click back to your original website. So you have a third alternative, which is to embed the video directly into your web page. Now, a player like this is small enough that the viewer neither detracts from your web page. In fact, it's in line with the other graphics so that it fits in well with the design of the web page. And it's small enough that it doesn't use up as much bandwidth in projecting the image. Also, with a smaller video, you get a much sharper image, even with lower resolutions. So the question is, how do you go about getting this kind of video into your web page when the tools that are available to most of us either embed it through YouTube or set it up in a separate website? 
Well, the answer can involve some expensive and complicated tools made by Adobe, which use flash players and flash encoding. It's not a real simple plug-and-play operation to build your own flash player and flash movie from scratch, but there are simple and free tools available to anyone who wants to use them. I recommend the Riva FLV encoder. Now, FLV is a kind of flash movie. When Flash first became popular on the web, it was in a format known as a SWIFT file. Its extension was SWF, and it's usually pronounced SWIFT. As bandwidth became more readily available, which is to say download speeds became faster with the advent of broadband, cable, and DSL, it became possible to have a higher quality format for your movies and Flash players began using a format known as FLV. Flash videos can have higher motion and higher frame rates and use better compression than Swift files. So whenever possible, you want to render your online video as an FLV rather than as an SFW or Swift file. And the Riva Flash Encoder does that. You can get it from rivax.com forward slash question mark encoder. You can see that right up here is the URL. This is the page you'll find. It has a short description of how the encoder works, the features. It's free. If you use it and like it, you can make an, a contribution through PayPal, but that's not required. They also sell products called the Reva Producer and the Reva Producer Lite, which can be used to make Flash movies. Reva can transcode movies in the AVI, the MPEG, QuickTime, and WMV formats. If you need help with those formats or the codecs, you can find them at this link. So download the Reva Flash Player by clicking on the Downloads link. scrolling down to the Flash Encoder and clicking on the link to download.com. That will give you what you need to make Flash movies from any sort of video that you're likely to have. Now you need a Flash player to embed on your website. You may not have thought about it, but when you have YouTube movies, or Camtasia movies playing on your website, they're embedded in a Flash player that is provided by the website. So you want to be able to have your own Flash player embedded into your own web pages as this player is here. The simplest way to do that is with another free tool provided by AFC AF Components. They have an embeddable FLV player which will complement the free FLV files made by the Riva encoder. So you go to this web page www.afcomponents.com forward slash blog forward slash question mark p equals 14 and you download their player. This link leads to their player. You right click on it and save target as download and save the flash player. The website also gives you pretty straightforward instructions which we'll go over step by step in how to embed your player and set the path for your movies. The embed code is provide it right here. All you have to do is copy it, highlight it, copy it. I always paste my code into a notepad, so paste it and save it so that it's not just on the clipboard. I won't lose it by accident. What we want to notice especially is first that this embed SRC code, as it comes from their blog site, leads to their player. You'll change the this information up to this point to be the path of your website. You'll put the player up once and you need to have your movies in the same folder as the player. Once you do that, you would change this to 
http colon slash slash www dot your website's name dot com and then you can give the uh, subfolders any names you want that's not important and then flv underscore demo dot swift that will change your flash bars autoplay equals false means that the Flash movie will not begin to play as soon as someone clicks into your website. If you want the movie to begin immediately, you would change false to true. Simple as that. Again, we have the path, HTTP, www, etc. You would change that to be the path to your movie. So you would change this to be the path up here where you embedded the player and you would have the name of your movie which probably wouldn't be sample FLV so this whole path would change to reflect the actual path to your flash movie it would be something as simple www.mysite.com let's say you created a folder called my flash and you named your movie sales.flv that's all you would have to do is fill in those so that your flash player knows where to look for your movie you can change the color of the player the height and size of the player so that if you want to embed it as this one was you would change the height and the size now you'll notice this 330 and the 270 are not quite 320 by 240. That's because you have to make room on the flash player for the controls and the border. So you can see the border adds 10 points and the controls add 30 points. So if you wanted to make it, for instance, uh, a small 160 by 120, you would make it instead of 160, you would make it 170. And instead of 120, you would want to add 30 points, so you would make that 150. And that will give you the, the 160 by 120 video with room on the bottom for your controls. What I mean by controls are these, the buttons here. That adds 30 points to the height and width of your movie. And then, as you can see, there's a small border that goes around the flash player as well. So that adds the extra 10 points to the sides, and the controls add the rest of the extra size to your movie. You can align the demo however you want, and the rest of this you just ignore. Then you take this code when you're ready, copy it, and paste it into your web page. Simple as that. Now let's walk step by step through creating the new flash file to creating the web page, uploading the flash files to our web servers. So let's begin by opening the Reva Flash Encoder. The first thing I want you to notice is that there are certain kinds of flash files that Reva can encode and certain ones in can't. The AVI files are pretty standard as are the MPEG. Once you get into QuickTime, you'll see that we start to find non-supported files, such as those created by Adobe Premiere or the QDM2 audio codec. The real problem comes in the Windows Media files. You'll see that only WMV7 and 8 are supported, not WMV9. Windows Media Player is now in the WMV10 format, so you'll have to use older Windows Media files or use AVI or QuickTime files instead. Let's open the Reva encoder and begin to make our movie. You'll notice that there is an input area where you'll browse and pick your AVI file and an output directory which you can specify. The image tab will let you choose your poster frame by either taking the first frame or one you specify. On the presets, I usually leave it at DSL XML. And then on movie size, choose which size you want your new flash movie to be. 
Your frame rate can be altered, the bit rate, and the audio rate can be chosen as either stereo, mono. You can change the bit rate and the sample rate. All of these things will change the size of your output file. So let's pick a file. Because my WMV files are in WMV10 format, I'm going to take an AVI file. Notice the size of this file is 2.5 gigabytes. That's a very large file, and we could never use that as a streaming video file online. Click Open, and the file is loaded. Notice that your destination file name is already filled in with the FLV extension added. Now let's change the size of the file to 320 by 240. When you're ready, just come to the bottom and press the Encode button. This can take a while depending on the size of your file. When it's done, you'll get the result message encoding successful. You can preview your new FLV file by simply clicking on the Preview button. It will play in the included Riva Flash Player. Let's take a look at the newly created flash file, and you'll see that it's almost 4 megabytes. That's quite a reduction from 2.5 gigabytes, and much better suited for web use. Now that we know the name and dimensions of our new FLV file, we can return to our web authoring software and begin to build a new web page. In my case, I'll be using front page, but any web authoring software will behave in pretty much the same way. We'll begin by adding the copy for the web page, and then we'll paste in the embed code that we created earlier. In this case, what I'm going to do is change over to split view, where I can view the underlying HTML in this page. Once we see the HTML code itself, we can paste the new embed code right here at the end where we want the player to appear. However, before we do that, let's review the embed code one more time. As you remember, we changed the path statement to reflect the actual path of our website. For this demo, it's ghostleg.com, but you would enter the name of your website or your website's URL, and a subfolder where you plan to keep the Flash Player. Autoplay equals false means it won't start automatically. If you change that to true, as soon as the page loads, the Flash Player will begin. You enter the name of the Flash movie you've made. If you upload the movie to the same page as the player, you won't have to enter the full path, but rather just the name of the FLV file. Next, you'll change the width and height of the file to reflect the size of your Flash movie plus the size of the controls. Don't forget to add 10 points to the width and 30 points to the height. When that's all ready, you can just paste it directly into the code of your web page. And as you can see, here it is with our new path statement. Autoplay is set to false so that this file doesn't start automatically, but the user will have to click on it to begin. We have the path statement for the name of the movie. And finally, you'll see the width and height of the FLV movie itself. If we go back and look at this page in preview, there'll be nothing showing even though we've added the code because we haven't yet uploaded the movie. So let's go and do that. This is my FTP software. First, I'm going to upload the Flash Player itself into a new folder that I've created to hold my Flash movies. Then I'll upload the actual movie that we created with the Riva FLV encoder to the same folder. Now if we go back and look at the preview page, you'll see that the Flash Player is visible and ready to go. This will work for anyone who has an always-on internet connection. If your web authoring software cannot reach the internet, of course you won't see the player until the page has been uploaded. Now let's check our movie. Hi, I'm Cindy Shubley and I want to share some very exciting news with you. You can now add promotional 
As you can see, both the audio and the video quality are excellent. This player has several nice features. When you mouse over it, the name of the file is displayed. You have a slider control on the right for the volume, where the listener can raise or lower the volume easily. Your seek bar will let you find any place in the movie. And there are buttons to go to the beginning and the end as well. Finally, let's review what we've covered in this tutorial. For a variety of reasons, including control and quality, we want to be able to add a Flash Player directly to our own website. YouTube has many advantages, including ease of use and a great savings on bandwidth. However, it also has several disadvantages. The quality is not as good as a Flash Player you'll upload yourself, and you have no control over the dimensions of the Flash Player. Likewise, Camtasia has many advantages and disadvantages. The size and quality with Camtasia are entirely within your control. Unfortunately, like YouTube, Camtasia requires users to leave your website and then return when the movie is over. As an alternative, we be looked at the Riva Flash Encoder, which will allow you to make your own Flash movies. When used with the AFC Flash Player, you'll be able to embed high-quality Flash movies within your own website without relying on any third-party hosting solution. All you'll have to do is change the path to match the URL of your own website and then customize the height and width of the Flash Player to match the movie you created in the Riva Flash Encoder. When that's done, you'll be able to embed a Flash Player that's entirely within your control. The audio, the video, the size of the player, whether it begins automatically or requires the user to click on the controls, will all be determined by you and your marketing needs, rather than by someone at YouTube. And you'll be advertising your own products. No one else's website and no one else's videos will ever appear unless you choose to have them appear. All of this can be done with just a few simple lines of code and a small understanding of HTML. It's easily within the grasp of any internet marketer. This is Danny Byrne for Ghost Leg Media. I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.